Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt. And today I'll be answering a tax question I get all the time. Should I contribute to my RRSP even if I have a low income? And the answer is yes, but not always. This is one of the most common misconceptions that I see all the time on YouTube videos, Instagram posts, even news articles will have headlines which are frankly misleading, saying things like, if you are a moderate income, don't contribute to your RSP, wait until you're at a high income. This sentiment is everywhere and it drives me crazy because it's only half correct. So I wanted to make a quick RSP video answering this specific issue and with the RSP deadline just a few days away on March 1st, the timing is perfect. I've already made four videos about the RRSP, breaking down how it works, the rules to follow, tax deductions, and withdrawals. So check out my RRSP playlist, but to make sure we're all on the same page, I'll give a super quick summary now. The RRSP is a tax sheltered account designed to fund your retirement, and it offers two main benefits. One, it allows your investments to grow tax free. This is extremely powerful and your investments will grow much faster inside an RRSP than they would in a taxable account. And two, it allows you to defer your taxes for years or decades until retirement. You are able to reduce the amount of taxes you pay now in your high income years and pay a much smaller tax bill when you retire and are in a lower tax bracket. Let's say my income is on the lower side. I make $45,000 a year in Ontario. That puts me in the lowest tax bracket. Combining both federal and provincial taxes, my marginal tax rate is 20.05%. That's how much I get taxed on every dollar I earn in that bracket. But on the flip side, if I reduce my taxable income by contributing to my RRSP, I save 20.05% of that. So if I put in $5,000 into my RRSP, I can save 20.05% of that from my tax bill. That can save me $1,002.50, and I'll receive this money as a tax refund in April when I file my taxes. So I save $1,000. Good, but not great. Remember, I am in the lowest tax bracket, and so I am getting the lowest possible tax savings with my RRSP deduction. What if I was at a higher tax bracket? Let's say my income was $60,000. That puts me in the second tax bracket, both on the provincial and the federal side, with a higher marginal tax rate of 29.65%. Now, if I made the same RRSP contribution of $5,000, I could save 29.65% of that. So I save $1,482.50. And look at that, with the same $5,000 RRSP contribution, I was able to save an extra $480 just because I was in a higher tax bracket. And if I was in an even higher tax bracket, I would see even greater tax savings. Clearly, I save more money with RRSP contributions in a higher tax bracket than a low one. That's a fact. So like everyone says, if I have a smaller income, I should avoid the RRSP and wait until I'm at a high income, right? Wrong. This is the frustrating part because people are only seeing half of the picture. Remember, what are the two main benefits of the RRSP? Tax shelter growth and reducing your taxable income. But this is the important part. You do not need to claim that RRSP tax deduction right away. An RRSP contribution and an RRSP deduction are two separate things and that's what people forget. Just because I put money into my RRSP this year, that's a contribution, does not mean that I have to claim that tax deduction this year. I can put the money into my RRSP and carry forward that tax deduction to a future year when I'm at a higher tax bracket. This way, I get to take advantage of both benefits. I can put that money into my RRSP right away and let it grow tax-free for years until I have that higher income and then I choose to claim that tax deduction to get those bigger tax savings. Instead, if I listen to the advice online and I avoid my RRSP until I'm at that high income, I lose out on years of tax-free growth and when it comes to investing, Time is your greatest ally, so don't waste it. This is exactly what I did. While I was in university, I invested in my RRSP even though I had a tiny income from side jobs. I knew I wasn't gonna claim those RRSP deductions since my income was so small, there were barely any taxes to save. But I knew that the earlier I invest, the more time my investments will have to grow and compound. 
So I started early. I put money into my RSP and I let my investments grow tax free for three years until I graduated and had a high paying job. And then three years later, I decided to claim those RSP deductions, which saved me a lot of money. And this isn't hard to do. I covered this in my tutorial on how to file taxes in Canada. But looking here, when you declare your RSP contributions, all you have to do is specify how much you want to carry forward to a future year. You can carry forward the full amount or you can claim some of it this year and some of it next year. It's up to you. The point I'm trying to make is that you can and should contribute to your RSP even when you have a low income, but this isn't always true. Let's say you're at the lowest tax bracket with an income below 50K and your income will never grow throughout your career. This is unlikely, but in this case, the RSP doesn't really make sense. You're already at the lowest tax bracket in your working years. So in retirement, you'll still be at the lowest tax bracket. So the taxes you save today will balance out the tax you pay when you retire. It will basically be a wash. Again, most Canadians won't be in this position. And if you have a low income, but you'd rather focus on the TFSA or RESP, that's fine. You're still getting the benefit of tax-free growth, I just don't want to see you guys avoiding the RRSP and investing in a non-registered account. Why pay taxes on your investments when you have tax sheltered room waiting for you? Also note that when it comes to US dividends, either from stocks or ETFs, those dividends will be charged a 15% withholding tax to the US government, even in a TFSA. But if you hold those same US dividends in an RRSP, you get to waive that 15% tax. Just another reason to consider the RSP, even if you're at a lower income. In my case, I never hold US dividends in my TFSA. You can see here that my TFSA portfolio is exclusively Canadian investments. All of my US dividend stocks that you'll see on my Blossom page, like Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, Pfizer, McDonald's, I only hold these US dividends in my RRSP account to avoid paying any taxes on them. And if you guys want to see my full investment portfolio and follow me every time I buy a stock, you can do it for free. Click my referral link in the box below to download the Blossom social app and connect with over 10,000 Canadian investors. We're really trying to bring more transparency into the world of investing and we're growing every day. So I hope to see you there and check out my announcement video where I talk all about it. Thanks for watching guys and be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really does help me build this channel on YouTube and hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook or Blossom at Canadian T-shirt, click the link in the box below or click the links on my homepage. Thanks everyone and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a T-shirt. Bye guys.